Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another fun cooking demo with USA Swimming. My name is Alicia Glass, and I am a senior sport dietitian that works at the United States Olympic Committee. Today, I have Katie Draybot with me, and we are going to be preparing blackened mahi mahi tacos. And um, while we kind of put together this yummy recipe, uh, we're going to be learning a lot about how Katie fuels, how she recovers, and some of her favorite recipes that she likes to prepare, both while she's at school, maybe cooking with friends or when she's home um, during a uh, pandemic quarantine. Uh, so um, we're gonna kind of get started. We're gonna work through this preparation and um, we'll ask questions and get some answers from Katie along the way. So my first question for you, Katie, is how is it being home and are you cooking for yourself or are you taking advantage of your family taking care of you? Yeah, so um, it's great being home. I don't really get to spend a whole lot of time at home throughout the, the school year because I'm mostly at school or somewhere else training or competing so it's really great to spend time and be home That's um, and yeah I'm definitely taking full advantage of, of that because I don't really get to cook for myself a whole lot at school because we live in the dorms or on campus housing so um, that's one thing I do miss about being home is being able to cook for myself and choose um, what exactly I'm putting into my body so I've definitely been getting very creative with recipes and just taking control of what I eat right now. Well, um, so this, this taco recipe has, um, I'm going to say three different parts. The first part is we're making a sauce for it, which is just the topping that we're going to put on it at the very end. We do that first just so that it has an opportunity for the, the flavors to kind of mix in with um, the cream base that we're using, as well as the avocado. Then we're going to make the seasoning, which um, with blackened fish, it's a lot of spices, a lot of herbs, a lot of seasoning that um, that's really what creates the blackened part. And the one secret ingredient that we have for this blackened mahi mahi is the brown sugar, which um, it creates what is called a malleard reaction, which is basically just the caramelization, or in this case, a blackening of a sugar that tastes delicious and it makes it look awesome too. So um, we're gonna get started with mixing those two things up. Um, the recipe that we posted is for four tacos. By all means, if you want to make it for your whole family, you can make eight tacos. If this is just for you and maybe you want to have um, one as a leftover or something like that, then um, you can keep it to the four tacos. So um, what we're gonna do is gonna make that avocado lime sauce. The first ingredient we're using, um, it calls for sour cream. Katie and I actually both have alternatives to that. So the first thing that I am gonna add is um, Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, which tastes very similar to sour cream. And then Katie, what did you pick up? Um, I have almond milk, plain yogurt. Awesome. Perfect. We're gonna add just a quarter of a cup of this. You can put it into whatever you need to blend it up. All right, so we got the sour cream or the alternative. Then you're gonna add in two tablespoons of water, which really is a consistency thing. So if you want a, a dressing that's a little bit more water, you can add more water, or if you want it kind of more um, thicker or more viscous, if you will, it, 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 like kind of more clumpy, then you don't add any water at all. But I'm gonna add just a little bit. Two tablespoons is what it calls for. All right, and then the next thing, we're gonna do half of an avocado. I already have mine halved, but the way you're going to do it, you're going to watch Katie do this. <laughs> you just basically cut ha in half down through the pit, and then you're going to rock all the way around it, just like Katie's doing, and then you're going to twist it open. Dude, look at her. She's amazing. <laughs> all right, and the next thing is cilantro leaves, okay? Then you're going to put it on your cutting board, and you're going to just kind of piece through it, and pull out the stems. All right, the next thing is lime juice. So you can have one of those little plastically lime things. That lime juice never tastes as good. So what um, I'm going to use, and I don't know what you have. Katie, okay, do you have a lime? I do. I already went ahead and freshly squeezed them. And you're actually, you can save the, the half. You're going to save part of this lime because we need to use the zest of it. The zest is really has... Um, really, you're getting kind of like the essence of a lime. Without the juice, you're just taking off the very top layer of a citrus fruit when you use the zest. It's a quarter of a teaspoon of zest. Then the last thing that we're going to add is the serrano, uh, serrano pepper. Serrano peppers are the ones that look like this. 
okay? You're gonna put the top on and you're gonna blend this up. Okay, first thing in the morning, before morning workout, what's your favorite snack? Um, I kind of have a hard time digesting food during practice, so I like to keep it light. Um, yep. I really like eating perfect bars. Yeah. Uh, they're kind of just full of butters, and um, I'll have about half of one of those to a whole bar. Um, just to kind of fill me up, but also keep it simple. So next thing we're going to move on to is the taco seasoning. And I think Katie and I both have ours kind of already measured out. Mine's already mixed up, but Katie's got hers all pretty. Oh, look at that. It's like <laughs> awesome. Okay. So Katie, now you can kind of mix that all together. This is that we have our um, smoked paprika. We got the brown sugar, like I said, which is a secret ingredient, which helps with the blackening. Uh, garlic powder, onion powder, salt cumin, chili powder, and that's if you like seasoning or you like spice, you can add a little bit more of that chili powder and then a little bit of black pepper. Katie and I both have fresh mahi-mahi. That's what we're gonna be using. Mahi-mahi is a very mild fish. So kind of keep that in mind, which is again why we're adding a lot of the spices to it. So I think, do you have steaks that look like this? They're kind of thick and yeah, like bigger. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna cut them into strips kind of like what would fit into a taco, okay? You don't want them to be too too small. So what I'm gonna do, I'm guessing this is probably um, around four ounces. It's a little bit bigger than my palm, a little bit thicker. I'm gonna cut this one into three pieces, okay? And so I'm gonna cut it uh, just right down the middle into three pieces, like, like I said, would fit into a taco, okay? So I think Katie's already got hers cut up. What we're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're just gonna roll it in your spice dish and you just want it covered. You want each of your pieces just covered in the spice. If you have uh, a gas range, I usually put it on about medium. And what you're looking for with this is you want it to be a little hotter. So I'm using avocado oil, which is a higher smoke point vegetable oil. So I'm gonna add just a little bit into my pan. So Katie, when you're living in the dorms, how do you balance your nutrition? to make sure you're getting what you need, given that other people are cooking for you. Yeah, so um, I've actually been very fortunate. The place that I've lived the past three years, uh, it's a higher, so the way Stanford housing works is kind of weird, but it's a higher tier, so like, um, just a better, I guess, style of housing. Yeah. And so we have a personal chef. Oh. Super, uh, bougie. <laughs> yeah. um, and so he's really good about accommodating for um, any dietary uh, um, and we've also because we've lived there for the past three years we've gotten to know him really well so um, oh, he great. requests a lot and I just really make sure that you know sometimes he does make tempting foods um, occasionally like fried foods or um, whatever it may be, but just kind of picking and choosing, but you have options. Exactly. And I kind of know my body at this point that I know what works before practice and what doesn't work. So yeah. if he's making pesto pasta before practice. I know that that's probably not the best <laughs> thing to eat. Um, so then I'll kind of stick to something a little bit more simple. Sure. But um, yeah, just kind of making sure I get uh, you know, a good balance of carbs, proteins, and fats throughout the day. Um, what's your go-to meal the night before meat? Um, I really like, again, like some type of fish um, with either a starch or um, a carb and a lot of vegetables. Um, just kind of have like the three different portions. I'm not super big into you know the carbo loading that everyone thinks you need like a giant pasta dinner the night before meat um i really like to keep it just simple and healthy and just full of um, a lot of vegetables and some protein i'm gonna flip mine over oh look at that black. now we're just gonna really quickly cut up the cabbage now this is all a garnish and this is where you kind of make your own adventure okay 
you're, if you like cabbage, great. This recipe called for both green and purple cabbage. Honestly, you could just choose one. I think it's just, it looks prettier if you get both the green and the purple shreds in there. But whenever you're cutting up cabbage, okay, so it'll come with as a big head, okay, you'll cut right down through the middle of it. Did you already, you already did this, right, Katie? I cut mine up, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you're gonna cut right down through the middle, and then you're gonna cut it again so you have a quarter. By doing the quarter, then you can easily remove this stalk that's in the middle, because this is really tough and it doesn't have much flavor. I'm gonna add in the cabbage. And because I'm a dietitian, I'm gonna add a whole bunch of different cabbage, or a lot of cabbage. Cabbage is, um, the bright colors are a sign that it has a lot of um, additional vitamins in it. So vitamin C, vitamin K. Vitamin K is really important for blood clotting and the health of your blood, so all good stuff. Um, we have cut up tomatoes, which I'm gonna sprinkle on there. And then we're gonna add in our dressing. And then the last thing is just adding a little bit of lime to it. And the lime, the lime juice is what kind of gives a little bit more flavor, and then the acids kind of help bring all the flavors out. That's a yummy looking taco. What's yours look like, Kate? <laughs> it looks a lot prettier than mine. Oh, I'm sure it's delicious. Oh, it looks amazing. We have one last question for you. When you're traveling to meats and other countries, what's the one snack or food you always travel with in your suitcase? I'd have to go with oatmeal, because that's something uh, before either for breakfast or even if it's for lunch, it just kind of fills me up and keeps yeah. me full, but also doesn't make me overly full or kind of move around in my stomach. So that's normally what I have for breakfast and lunch, at least during meets. Yeah. Um, or as a pre, pre, uh, race snack, I guess. So, uh, that's probably one of my go-to, uh, make sure I bring that to the meet. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining us. I hope you enjoy your black and mahi mahi taco. And we really enjoyed learning from you and some of your tricks and secrets to fueling and traveling as a Team USA athlete. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me.